Hey, Reading Side Settle, it's Lisa. Here I am without Tammy. Uh, this season seven has been, um, gosh, it has been one of a kind. We've, we're coming up on two years of Riding Side Saddle, and um, this is the first time in all of our time recording that we have had such difficulty. Um, Tammy is not with me tonight. She, um, for all good reasons, um, there's just, she just could not make it tonight. Um, so we decided the show must go on. Um, despite um, Tammy not being able to be here. Um, and I am joined by a guest uh, tonight. You are familiar with this person um, directly and indirectly. Uh, I welcome Deidre back to the recording studio, my daughter. Hello, hello. <laughs> here we are. Um, it's a, It's been a little bit since we've had Deidre in the recording studio. I think the last time you were here with um, Tammy and I, we were actually on the road, literally yes, on we the were. road. Uh, we had Emily mm -hmm. and Hudson That's right. in the vehicle and you and I and Tammy. And we, um, it was a good night. It was, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We were driving all over kingdom come. Yes. Um, sometimes circles in through multiple subdivisions, yeah. <laughs> um, over and over and over again. And, uh, we were kind of getting a little bit of insight from you and Emily and Hudson, Hudson in some cases, about how motherhood has been going for you. So, um, and that was a while ago. That was, was it? Did I? I had my baby, second you, baby. Yeah, you did. I you did. Naraya was just born, I feel like. Like, it was... Yeah. Maybe she was maybe at six weeks, a month, something like that. Okay. She was not very old. Um, I would have to go back and listen, but she was newborn. Mm -hmm. It feels like I a would, lifetime ago, doesn't it? It really, really does. Uh, my past, yeah, a couple of years have a very much of a blur around it. And I mean, I don't, yeah, I wasn't even sure. I don't even know. My my whole past couple of years have just been. Well, I know you weren't pregnant. I know you weren't <laughs> pregnant because yeah. uh, when we went and had our planning session and dinner before, yeah, because I had, had a drink. A drink. <laughs> and I you was were very like, thrilled. You were like, damn right, I'm having a drink. And I think it was just the one, maybe two, it and I was like, two. Ooh, right. here we are. <laughs> so yeah. you're right. It probably was <laughs> freshly after. Yeah. It it was not. It was not long. Yeah. Um, I have done follow up, a follow up recording, uh, with Tammy, kind of just talking about things from my perspective from the year of 2023, which, you know, when you said that your life in the last couple of years was a blur, mm -hmm. that of course had impact to me as well. Most definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it also felt like a bit of a blur, but for all of the things that felt like a blur to me it was magnified for you really. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's really what I wanted to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, not getting a play by play of, you know, what are all the crazy things that happened to you in the last two years? <laughs> you know, not, not through that lens, but from a lens of just enormous amounts of change mm -hmm. and growth and like fears and, working through things that you probably would have never imagined that you'd be working through right. and having literally all of that happen in a really short period of time. Mm -hmm. Like very recently you have said to me, um, literally every single thing of my life has changed. Yes, it has in a year. Yep. Just, just over. Considering, yeah, the last time I was on the show was when my baby was very small. Was very small, and I was married, and now I'm divorced, and she is, you know, a little over a year. And yeah, there's nothing about my life that is the same from that time frame. And it's crazy to me um, to think about um, because. I mean, 
from my own standpoint, I have grown so much and I am so grateful for all the steps that I have uh, taken for myself personally uh, and for my children's sake, which that's the whole point, right? But again, if you look, if I'm looking at it, this has all happened within even the first year of my daughter's life. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is just a, a huge amount of change, not only just for myself as an adult woman, but now thinking about all that change that is not, that has occurred for my children as well. Yeah. And they've been with me every step of the way. Yeah. And so young. Yeah. So it's kind of mind blowing. It's very mind blowing. Yeah. Even just her first birthday, I was just taken aback as to how she had lived in three houses by that point. <laughs> so very big things considering, yeah, there's been stuff about my own adult life that I, I guess I didn't really want to have my children go through and I didn't foresee that. And I tried really hard to make that happen. But I think my lesson that life is kind of given me is to how to go through the things that I didn't want to have happen, but how can I change that? So it can be brighter for them. Hopefully yeah. that's my hope. Right. Uh, <laughs> Cause I still I don't that. know. <laughs> I get that. Of course but, you have to live through it. Right? Yeah. Right. So just as a, you know, just you, t you talked a little bit, about, you know, the past year and lots and lots of changes. So mm -hmm. we don't have to go into details and specifics because that's not the intention. But, you know, like you said, you you had been married um, for how long? Um, <clears throat> I had been married coming up on uh, four years. Okay. Um, collective, well, pretty collectively with um, my ex-husband now. Uh, it was a coming up on 14 years right so because you had been in a relationship mm -hmm. for 10 years prior to yeah yeah I mean there is still a couple you know you're in an on and off breakups but it's not like a every month type of ordeal we had I think it it was several years still in between the two times that we had split up um and even the second time was hard it was a week right right <laughs> so so it barely it was barely I, I really collect I really count it still as just almost 14 years it was half of my life right half of your life and all of your adult life all of my adult life yep and since I yeah since I've been 14 14 years later 28 here I am mm -hmm. and it's actually really funny and I think that life again has you know how you say or how the saying goes you know you make plans and god or the universe laughs, laughs. yes i do <laughs> and <laughs> i've experienced that firsthand in fact <laughs> yes and here i am i had this grandioso plan of how i was going to have this life go and it really laughed hard a big 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 belly laugh it said okay and I think this is my own personal opinion. Okay, you're turning 28. It's your golden birthday year. We are going to just switch it all up. Bitch, <laughs> we are going to switch it up, bitch. Yeah. Hold it is on. your golden year to turn your soul, whole life around for the better yeah. in a golden way. Yeah. <laughs> At, and, you know, that is, I don't think that is lost on anybody, right? Yeah. Like that, that the synchronicity of that happening in that like in that period of time it literally is like a switch flipped it really really was and you know it's funny that you said synchronicity because i have been having a whole bunch of synchronicities ever since my birthday interesting it's within been, so your 28th year and you've been having synchronicities this whole year I'm going to even rewind it a little bit further, and I'm going to say that my first synchronicity was the day that my husband left. Okay. And because there was a, yeah, there was just like a couple little things where, you know, I, you know, he left and um, it was, it was for addiction reasons and things, and I was there supporting him and you know, he needed to go um, to 
uh, seek help. And um, he and he chose to do that. Uh, we found a place that worked within um, insurance purposes that allowed him to go all the way across the country um, so that he could get the best help that he could have. And um, he had done that a couple times. We'll just put it that way. Um, and the, the last time that he had left uh, was last June. Mm-hmm. And um, from that day... A year later, I had, or a couple months ago, I was telling myself, I want to gift myself with these tattoos. I'm, I like tattoos, and each one of them has a, a specific lesson or a representation for me. And, and I said, I don't care when it is. I just want to get it down in the books. I don't care when it is. I'm just going to reach out. I always go to new tattoo artists, um, every single one, but I couldn't find anybody else. And I ended up going back to the person that I had gotten my golden Leo lion tattoo, right? which was my last birthday. Right. And I, and he said, I said, I want to get as many tattoos in one day as I can, because I'm a single mom and I don't have a lot of time. So I'm doing <laughs> as many as I can today. <laughs> it's a once and done. There's no time for yes. a reschedule. Yes. Right. So I said, when is your next availability? And he said, my next day is the same exact day as my one year anniversary from my ex leaving. Okay. Which I said, okay, book it (laughs) because that is a synchronicity right there. That's crazy. It absolutely is. And yeah, there would be little things like that all the time. I, the first concert that I had gone to from him leaving, we got handed VIP tickets just out of nowhere and we're able to go like front stage and center. Yeah. I've had a lot of number things go on, um, especially lately, but, um, yeah, uh, you just always looking at the same time or them coming up at certain times or randomly in different places. Just randomly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or there's so many examples that I could come up with, but it has been consistently, now that I've seen them, you can't stop. Seeing I can't them. stop seeing them. Yes. It's something is screaming and pay attention. Yeah. Attention. attention. You're, and I just think it's just trying to guide me saying like, no, you're doing the right thing. That's exactly you're what on the is. right path. And here's another little golden pebble to say, just like a little wink. Yes. I got you girl. Mm-hmm. Good job, Deidre. <laughs> <laughs> you can unclench now. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. (laughs) Some days I can't, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's how it goes. Right. Yeah. I know ultimately from that day, something shifted in my life and the universe has been behind me just clapping. So. That's really unbelievable uh, and remarkable. Not to say it hasn't been tough. Oh my God. It's been the toughest year of my life, a couple years of my life, but specifically again, this past year since I, right. Like I, you know, June, right. My, my ex left. And by August, I had to decide to put my house up on the market because, well, let's even, let's even step back because like, yes, June, you, you know, made a really significant decision as a couple to Mm -hmm. no longer be a couple. And, you know, he was going to go get the help that he needed Mm -hmm. and you were going to manage a household and two kids and a dog Mm -hmm. and synchronicity or not, or bad timing Mm -hmm. of all things to happen. But it was like the weekend right before you were going back to work, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yes. Like I, you were just coming off of leave. I was not even done with my maternity leave before. It was actually, again, really ironic because I was, <clears throat> it was the week before leading, coming back um, to work. And I, my coworkers had said, you know, why don't you bring the baby in? We can meet her and all that kind of stuff. And I, I finally decided like on the Wednesday prior to coming back that I would do this. And it was that same day that my um, ex had texted me saying he needs help and he needs to go. Um, And that night he had gotten a plane ticket and he was going to be leaving like the next day or two. And so it was, it was just, yeah, like that day that I was going back in to show people my baby to work at work for me to then 
go through this horrific weekend to then show up on Monday ready and prepared (laughs) to start work again. As much as possible. Right. Because physically, mentally, emotionally, no person could like be like, okay, here's Mm -hmm. my Superman lunchbox. Right. I am ready to go. Clock me in. Uh Right. Like, like it was my whole world Mm -hmm. fell out from underneath me. I have a four month old baby and a two and a half year old Mm -hmm. little boy. Right. Mm -hmm. At, at that time, I'm not getting any sleep. Right. She was not a good sleeper. She was not a good sleeper. (laughs) Not Thank even God she Almighty, was one. that has changed. <laughs> I concur. I am very, very, very grateful, Naraya, if and when you ever listen to this, <laughs> that by the time you were older than one, you finally gave me a full night of sleep. <laughs> and she's very consistent now, so that's so that's good. Granted, she did wake up at. 4 30 this morning she did <laughs> oh my gosh what i said heck? no no why are you going back to bed <laughs> <laughs> well i did notice i think she's getting a little tooth on the bottom yeah. so that she likes to do those in pairs yes multiples yep so she's a go-getter she just goes for it when she's ready she's coming in hot <laughs> and that was my whole labor <laughs> That was we your, talked about that last time. That was your pregnancy and whole labor, <laughs> yes. the whole shebang. The whole, she when she makes up her mind, she is on it, and <laughs> and her whole personality is that way. One hundred percent. Yep. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> little fiery little soul. <laughs> uh-huh. She certainly is. Ooh. It is on or off yep. with her. Um. So, all right. So. You go back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you're trying to make. You're trying to make this all happen. Yeah. Um, as a person who is exhausted, mm-hmm. um, recovering, mm-hmm. right? Because you're not fully physically in a in a good place yet after um, delivery and you know managing. Yeah, my hormones are just maybe finally starting to level out a little. Well, but, and then add that to exhaustion and high levels right, of stress. Right. And, you know, it. you don't just, like, magically get everything back at mm-hmm. four months. Like, that's that's probably a nine-month, year-long process right. to be able to do that. So, um, Three months. She, Twelve weeks. Oh, it was twelve weeks. Yep. I, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Even, let's, yeah, subtract that. Yeah, three months old. Three months postpartum. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Malachi, right? Mm, right. Two and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, Nar- Naraya is absolutely a fiery soul. Um, Malachi is his own unique mm-hmm. little person, and he is a spitfire, right? He is. Like, But he's also the most heartwarming and empathetic little boy as well. And again, I have... He has been through so much, right? He He's a two and a half year old that has had to take on some really big responsibilities, not only of just needing to, you know, do things more self-sufficiently because there was just wasn't anyone else because I was needing to be with Naraya and, and, you know, whatever else. But also he had to witness his mom going through a large amount of emotions and he was the one who was there helping me out and yeah. that, and he just sees it and he, is a very good comforter for being a three-year-old now. And it's, yeah. it's, but that also is just crazy. Like he's going to be great one day. He's already is <laughs> for anybody, but I'm just saying he's very, he's very great aware. with hugs. Well, <laughs> yeah. He's very aware Yes. Um, of like the things that aren't said, mm-hmm. but he, he can see it. He can see things. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with that entirely. Yeah. All right. So you go back to work. Mm-hmm. You're, managing like you're everybody's still alive right like (laughs) was it pretty fuck no Mm -hmm. it wasn't pretty but everybody's still alive clean fed like still marching forward that's right um probably late i'm but we are there i mean (laughs) right how much how much can you expect (laughs) yeah really um and then you sold the house Mm -hmm. yep 
and that's and like that was a situation where you know you put it up and that I mean the market the market is was still, insane yes yeah. I mean at that point it was insane I mean it's still in a spot I feel like now but at that time it was you know you you can price it at this point but there's probably going to be bidding wars and it's going to be off the market in a flash and it really was and it worked out in our favor and we'll I'll just leave it at that right but at that point I had I think it was what a month to if get that, out if that and and mind you I to get out of this house right <clears throat> Nothing's packed yet. Right. And also, my relationship had ended. So I had to separate and go through all of our belongings, but alone. Well, not alone. With well, an right. infant and a two-and-a-half-year-old yep. in tow. Mm-hmm. Right. So... Amongst all my help that I had from you guys and well, whatnot. But, yes. When, still... Right. Like yeah. the bulk of that responsibility was still in, in your lap. Mm-hmm. I remember at that time, um, er, sorry. You're good. <laughs> I remember at that time, you know, you were still going through a ton of emotional mm-hmm. things and, and you probably still are honestly mm-hmm. working through and healing and doing all of those things. But, you know, at that point, emotionally, um, the bleeding had not like oh, even no. stopped. Like it was gushing. Yeah. And um, I remember you saying to me, um, I said, Deidre, we ha- you have to start doing this and you have to start doing this. And I and I know that you're not in a place right now mm-hmm. to be able to like to to think through these things. I know you're not in a place emotionally to do it, but you have to. Mm-hmm. And you were like, this is going too fast. Like I can't do this Mm -hmm. it's it's just going too fast and I think that you were um you know you were so raw and um in emotional distress Mm -hmm. that like you couldn't even shift into like like automatic response because you were so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. with all of the stuff right yeah again right yeah that's probably why you say that last two years is kind of a blur well, really? at, there's there comes to a certain point. I'm a nerd, so a lot of anatomy and physiology <laughs> goes through my head. Oh, but, you're a nerd? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You must have gotten that from me. <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but from a physical standpoint, when the body goes through so much stress, mm-hmm. your cortisol levels rise, all of your hormones are becoming out of whack, and your your adrenal glands are just pumping it pumping. out. Right. And I'm at, in your hippocampus which is what um, is your like your reasoning, your ability to make decisions mm-hmm. that shrinks because your adrenals, which is your fight or flight, is on such a high capacity that it's overcompensating. So when your body goes through a prolonged amount of stress of high to, to that type of a degree and, and then obviously you throw trauma and things on top of it, um, yeah, you you start to have brain fog. Your 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 I, body. I can't function. You cannot I just just yeah yeah. You just are moving on autopilot. There's a your fight, your fight or flight or freeze. Right? right. So there's moments where yeah. I mean, and I even still see it. To last night, I had <laughs> an overstimulation. This happens every day. Every day, yeah. I was overstimulated, and these are things that I'm recognizing now. So I, I, the, I know that I'm again on the right path of healing because a year ago I was just there, right? I was in that haze, that brain fog. I'm stuck. I'm in that freeze. Whereas now I'm able to realize I'm overstimulated. Yeah, and I need to figure out how to calm myself down to make the situation better again. <laughs> right. So I know that I'm taking that step forward. Um, but literally last night I sent a text message to my sister and I just said, I'm shutting down because I had just too much noise, constant noise, touching and needing, touching and, and getting my hair pulled and yeah. all these, all these things at the literally same time, getting your hair pulled, right? Literally right. getting your hair pulled. And it just, it all happens at the same time. And that's when my stress levels 
go up, my anxiety goes up, my my overstimulation is at its high max, and then I I just noticed like I just shut down. I just I couldn't do anything more and I just needed to just stare off and that was it. And that was the end. I put mm-hmm. I needed a I my one of my things I've learned about myself is music has helped me, so like I'll put in an ear pod and obviously it's not like to the point where I can't hear anybody else, but I can it's just there for me to allow my brain to just go into that song. Yeah. And I'm able to sort out my mind or at least have it feel a little more quiet even though I'm literally adding more noise to right, it but right. it's but it's, it's a noise that, that I'm enjoy. choosing yes right right so yeah um le- a, a year ago it was it was so fast <clears throat> got the house up moved separated out all the things moved out within a month mo- into your house yeah and all then into one bedroom. Right. It's like <laughs> the the physical environment yeah. and the decisions that we made. Mm-hmm. We made those decisions because right. that was absolutely the thing that needed to happen. Yeah. But the physical environment, it was it was tough. Yeah. It was really tough. Mm-hmm. Like we all, mm-hmm. right? Like my household, your family, merging all of that together for what, like was, at least a month to six weeks. It was, yeah. it was tough going, mm-hmm. um, just because it, the you just environment, had to get things settled. Yeah, right? the like, environment wasn't conducive. Yes. So then we have, you know, two ladies, mm-hmm. both overstimulated mm-hmm. and respond in the same exact ways because they are very similar, <laughs> way, way similar. Um, but we worked it out. Yeah. Right. It, um, you know, as I had said in previous, uh, in a previous episode, from my perspective, um, even though it was tough and, it, and the environment and the situation, I would have never had hoped for that for you and for the kids. Um, it was, it was a blessing. It was a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, mm-hmm. in my nana heart, <laughs> um, to be able to experience those little children mm-hmm. um, in the way that I was able to. And at such a big time, too. As you've mentioned with Naraya, um, just, you know, obviously I am I'm their mom and I was the main caretaker, right? Um, but I had so much help and support in that household with you guys and every single morning you would wake up and you would be there to help me get us out the door. (laughs) That's because I needed you to get out the door. It was a dual purpose. (laughs) You're like, I will wake up at five so that I can get you out by seven. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) You have a whole eight hours of quiet. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) But it was during the time frame again, when my daughter at that point was, she was five months old. And it was until she, well, she was younger than that, even. Oh, maybe not. Mm-mm. Maybe not. No, because it, it, we moved all, in in September. You're right. It's, it's a blur. blur. It's a blur for me too. <laughs> um, and then we, and then I moved out in March. Yeah. So, um, it was from like five months. So it was almost to eleven to eleven ish months. Yeah. yeah, about a year. Yeah. So, it was a very big time frame because. When that first year, there's just so many developmental things. You, that's when you're getting your relationships built of, of who would it, who is there and right. who's important to you as right. that as that little one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yep. so you created that that relationship with her. That was like, here's my mom and here's my nana. Right, and right. that is just a huge thing for her. So, um. That was, and again, yeah, too, with Malachi as well, just, he needed that space, he too. Did. He and, did. And um, it was a very nice, as as you've put it in the past, a nice landing pad yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then, it, <laughs> of course, March happened, 
And so March, Raya turned one. Raya turned one. Anyway, this was all in a two week time frame. Raya turned one. Welcome to Deidre. Yes, seriously. Again, one more thing that Deidre <laughs> takes after me on. Like, oh, yeah, I, I don't do things one at a time. Mm -hmm. Let's just throw the whole fucking shit all on All of there. it at the same time. And yeah, you know, sign, sign me up. Yep. Why don't, you, why don't you actually just double that up? Uh-huh. Right there. Just yep. two scoops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just give me some more. And, and, and the cherry on the top. <laughs> So I forgot, again, blur, I forgot that there was multiple things going on. I had moved into my apartment. Yeah. And then it was Naraya's birthday, like yes. two weeks later. But something else big had happened during that, that same month. Oh, my God. That was when my divorce was finalized. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so I move in on the 14th of March. Yep. I got divorced on the 19th of March. And then Naraya turns one on the 23rd of March. Yes. <laughs> So, surprise! I know. Let's just kickstart you. <laughs> and I, I feel like Naraya's like, wink. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Mom. <laughs> I am here to help you in your healing. Mm -hmm. Let's just fast forward through all of it. I'm a busy girl. Let's make this shit happen. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, and so I have my new up new place where you're getting readjusted another transition yep. right a huge and one huge and then come june i got a new job and now i'm looking at a new car <laughs> <laughs> so like, literally literally everything, everything has changed yep. mm -hmm. i and shout out to molly Cyrus. her <laughs> one because of her she songs listens. yes of course she <laughs> listens um <laughs> Um, one of her songs, um, used to be young, says one of the favorite lines in it is the, oh, now, of course, now You're that gonna... I'm on the spot, it's going to be off. Damn Don't it. hate me forever. Um, <laughs> Miley. Miley specifically Please forgive you. me. It's a little bit of a blur right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe want to write a song about that. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> we, can we can chat about it. <laughs> Chateau. Okay, I'm done. Okay, Anyways, thank you. Um, <laughs> let's get back on track here. Um, one of the lines is to the effect of, um, the you, the you, the me that you used to know is no longer here. Yeah, it's that's not it. I know, but, but that is that that's, that's the, the essence essence of it, and it and it is just so true. The person that I was a year ago. From a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, an emotional standpoint, aren't they are gone? Does that person not exist. is not here. I don't dress the same. I don't listen to the same music. I don't do the same things. I don't even. I mean, I would like to say I hang out with the same people, but of, of course, my friends and their lives continue right to and, sure. and 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 my own choice. But also from a response aspect was I, I hermited myself yeah. and I, I didn't really spend a lot of time with a lot of people because I was doing a lot of inner work. And so I love all my friends just the same, but I, yeah, their lives went on and, and I was just trying to survive. Right. So you're just trying to get up off your knees. Mm -hmm. So all, all of it is just different and but all for the good. I know. Well, that. And that's, that's my, that was going to be my follow-up question. And I know the answer because I've, we've talked about it before, mm -hmm. but, um, for as difficult as this has been, mm -hmm. like earth shattering, mm -hmm. life altering, I could never imagine this in a million years mm -hmm. type of pain. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I never wanted this, right? right? I worked really hard to not have this happen. Mm -hmm. um, would you change any of it? Honestly, I would not shorten it, but I would have all of it happen still again. It was, like you said, it was incredibly intense. Incredibly intense, but also. <clears throat> Maybe it was needed to happen in such a t short time frame because I was for so long so hesitant on making any type of change, even though I was so miserable and so low. And if I wouldn't have just done it and and 
kind of just pushed right into it. I don't know if I would have if I would have done it. Do you think that the universe just gave you a like, big boot in the ass? Yes. And been like, bitch. It's time to <laughs> change. We have been telling you this. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's your golden <laughs> year. You have spent half your life. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you're changing. Mm-hmm. It is time. Yeah. Yes. So, no, I would not change any of it. I am so grateful. Um, as hard and difficult as as it has been. Um, and, again, with the background of addiction, I think that has <clears throat> a big part of my healing process as well, considering, you know, there, there could have been multiple different ways I could have handled getting divorced, right? And there's no shame in any, in any of the ways that people handle how these types of things go. But from my own traumatic aspect through addiction and alcoholism, I could have just buried myself with booze, yeah. right? And I it could have been easy. It would have been easy. And I would have escaped a lot of the, the pain and, the, and all the stuff that I was dealing with. Or I could have, there's a hundred different things that I could have done, but I chose to not, I chose to to do a lot of this sober yeah, and to um, be present, to be present and to just really, again, do that inner work. Um, there was, and oh man, I, I did not realize how easy it is to just go for a distraction, um, to choose distraction over being present and and working through um what it is and again from a from a body standpoint if i just would have kept picking distraction i would have started to still have those cortisol levels elevated i would have just started storing it though within my body and it would have started impacting me more and more and more i even remember Like, towards the end of my marriage, I was having a lot of, like, physical things. My hair was getting really brittle, and I had, like, dandruff galore, and, like, acne and stuff. All this stuff was happening. Again, granted, I was 12 12 weeks (laughs) postpartum. but, But besides the point, I also just know that a lot of that had to just deal with the amount of stress that I was on on a daily basis that I was putting on myself, right? Until I chose, until I chose myself and I put myself first and my children first and made those decisions for us, I noticed that my body started changing and my mindset started changing and it took, that is still changing to this day. Yeah, but it is. That, that's a gradual process. That's a gradual process mm-hmm. and it's going to take a long time. But again, those, those baby steps and choosing to go through it versus pick the distraction. Yeah. And it's helped me so much. I have met some people, and again, I feel like this is part going back to the synchronicities. Yeah. Because each distraction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> has brought I'm me. I'm with you, girl. I'm with you. <laughs> has brought me a different lens. Um, they all have somehow taught me um, different things. There was a person that traveled um, like away willingly from his kids and I was able to talk to him as to like, okay, well, why, you know, how do you feel about this? Or like this, just, just the, just that concept. To get the perspective. To get that perspective, right? Because I, I, I'm a blunt person and I've chose that, um, open honesty is the way that I'm going to be my most authentic self. And it, seriously, what do you have to lose? Right. What like, do I have to lose? Right. You could just stop talking to me. I, right. It's, it's right. not really that big of a deal. Right. 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 <laughs> right. If you don't. Yeah. So anyways, I, I bluntly ask these, these very forward questions to these people, because again, what do I have to lose? Right. So I was able to have that aspect, that perspective. There's been people that again, like either have dealt with addiction or are currently going through addiction issues as well. And I'm not like having big red arrows like, oh, hey, if you have (laughs) a 
abuse problems, like drug or alcohol related, come to me. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> but it just happens. And I really, again, I think that life is bringing me these people because not only am I, have I learned something from each person, um, but they still talk to me on a friendship basis at this point. Yeah. Um, about uh, addiction and, or like, just like deep life, life talks. <clears throat> I have, you know, just friends and not just obviously the distractions, but just friends in general, I have- um, that just talk to me like about spirituality or about, um, just trauma response. And, um, I'm just shocked with like, the synchronous the synchronization because not only have I been dealing with that or have dealt with it, but now I'm having people like come and and want to have these brutally honest and raw raw conversations that ends up allowing both of us to see and grow from it. Yeah, and I think that's beautiful. It's amazing. It and, feels like <clears throat> it feels like. When the universe said, um, uh, excuse me, Deidre, I don't mean to bother you, Mm -hmm. but it is time. Yeah. And the whole shit started coming down. It also said, it is time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to create these opportunities for you to be able to help through Mm -hmm. the, through the way. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's what you're referring to. Like that's the raw, Mm -hmm. uh, deep conversations, very direct, blunt conversations that give you insight or, and, or healing Mm -hmm. or perspective that Mm -hmm. you didn't have before. Right. If I wasn't having those experiences, um, and having these types of conversations, maybe my healing process wouldn't have been where yeah. it is. Because yeah. again, I, when I say that I talk deep and authentically, <laughs> I have, I have been told I don't have much of a filter. So I don't know where you get that. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. We should figure that out someday. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think I will s- even though I've been told that I have no filter, that's also one of the biggest compliments that I have received about me too is, yeah. is that I am so forward and authentic and not afraid to ask these things. Yeah. Good for you. So good for you. Well, I can say, um, as your mother, um, I don't know that I could be more proud of you. Thanks. I'm not going to continue because I'm going to cry. Um, but I won't. <laughs> I know you won't. Um, it is. It has been. Um, it has been one of the most difficult things to watch um, that I have ever experienced uh, as a mother. One of the most difficult things, um, and also the most beautiful uh, transformation that I have seen in the last year. And you're not done. Like, you are not even close, remote to being done. No, I Um, know that too. I can feel it. (laughs) Um, But to know who you were Mm -hmm. a year ago and two years uh, ago-ish, you know, during that period of time, and to see you now... Mm -hmm. um, It is immense, immense change. And I am exceptionally proud of you. I appreciate it. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. It's definitely not been easy. No, I know. But sometimes the best best work isn't. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Say the same thing at the same time. (laughs) Sorry. We're not alike at all. No. (laughs) This, This never happens. So weird. <laughs> Who is laughing? You don't even know. <laughs> so it's the same. <laughs> don't say your telephone number because no. for sure we'll sound the like. <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, thank you very much for um, taking the time tonight. Um, we literally have planned this. So um, 
I brought Liz along and she volunteered to stay in the house with the kids and put Malachi to sleep so that Deidre could come out and sit in the recording studio um, and know that the kids were safe and handled and um, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have any, you know, needing milk or going to the bathroom or read me another book or all um, the other. I'm hungry yet. Stall Wait, tactics. We didn't, we didn't eat dinner. <laughs> oh, I have to poop now. Yeah. Oh, like, <laughs> like all of the things. <laughs> um, so I appreciate that from Liz's perspective as well. Um, also, it, can you carry me? <laughs> yeah, can you carry me? Yes, that's a that's a good one. Um, rub my ears. Like <laughs> <laughs> all the things. It has. Um, Aside from the growth and development that I have seen from you as a person, as a unique individual, um, one of the other things that stands out for me in this last, you know, year and a half ish uh, period of time has been um, just the coming together of family and women in your life mm -hmm. to be able to say, you can't do this on your own. Right. And, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got I you. I have had <clears throat> so much support from so many different facets of my life. Um, when I had, when I had, when I was going to be getting married, my mom at my bridal shower had given this beautiful speech about, about finding your tribe. And I didn't, I, of course, had my tribe then, right? I had my tribe when I had my children. But I think that my tribe really came together when I got divorced. When you needed it When most. I needed it most. Yeah. I have had it, not only women, but men in my life, too. Um, you know, my dad has been able to step up and um, really take on and helping me and supporting. Um, it's been really nice that way. Um, I had... Even my ex's uh, brother and his wife, they helped me out for numerous months as well. Um, his family extended. Uh, lots of people have all just helped me. Um, I'm very, very grateful because if I didn't have all that, my yoga studio co-op teachers let me keep some of my stuff at their studio, right. at, at the right. studio. Like, There's just been so much help. And... Um, that's very hard for me because I don't like asking for help. Yeah. Um, but okay. it's, it's made me realize that one, it's okay to ask for help right. and I don't have to do it all on my own. And when you fucking need it, you fucking need it. <laughs> and yes. And just to accept it then. Right. Right. Is a big thing too. So yeah. thank you to everybody who has helped me to make me where I am today. We got you girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that in mind, we're going to wrap this bitch up. Um, <laughs> uh, next week, we will have Tammy and Lisa back, uh, and we will get season seven back on track one way or another. Man, we, we are going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you ade again, Deidre, for joining tonight. Um, we love you, and we look forward to all of the big things that you do. Thanks for having me. All right. Till next time, as Tammy would say, toodaloo. <laughs>